Hello, in this video we're going to talk about dynamical systems. So a dynamical system is a system whose state at time t is determined by a set of rules. We can model discrete time dynamical systems or continuous time dynamical systems. Okay, so I'd like to talk about discrete time versus continuous time dynamical models. So first of all, for discrete time. These are models where time is measured with a discrete variable. So models with time measured discreetly. Okay, so as an example, um, suppose I go out and I'm going to measure the number of trees. So let's say I'm going to measure or count the number of trees in Winooski, Vermont, so small town in Vermont, small city in Vermont. And I'm going to do this every January 1st of a new year. Okay, and so my model is going to look something like time, and this is measured in years, maybe years since the start of my study. Let's say I start my study January 2018, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to measure the number of trees in Winooski. And so I go out at time equals zero, which is January 1st, 2018, and I find that there's 25 trees in Winooski, and then maybe one year later, I go out and find that there's 29 trees, and so forth. I keep going with my model, but time is measured discreetly. There's no in-between value between the, the markers where I've on my measurement. And if you were to look at these data points, 0, 1, 2, and so forth, these are like discrete points. If you measure your maybe your real number line here, this is time, your data points are at these dots, time equals 0, time equals 1, time equals 2, and so forth. Right? There's no in-between. There's no going out and measuring trees in the month of August, for example. We are only measuring trees at these discrete uh, time steps. And we can imagine all sorts of other things, like maybe every morning we go in and look at the number of fruit flies in our kitchen, or we look at the number of sick people each morning in a hospital. So there are lots of situations where it makes sense to look at data discreetly. The other type of model we're going to look at is called a continuous time model. So continuous time models, so these are models in which time can take on any value, any real value, any real number value, maybe in a given interval. Okay, so as an example of this, um, you know, suppose I've got the classic uh, throwing a ball in the air model. So as an example, uh, suppose a ball is thrown into the air. And maybe the position of the ball Right, there's, there's no jumping around. The ball smoothly goes up and falls back down. Maybe your position function is given by uh, some equation like s of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 39.2 t. All right, and so the idea here, if we look at what's going on for our time, 
So here's our axis for time. We're going to start the ball at zero. Maybe the ball is in our hands and we're going to launch it off with some initial velocity at time equals zero. And then we could look at the ball at any particular time from the time it leaves our hands and goes up and reaches the maximum and then comes back down and falls down to Earth. Okay, so the idea here is that there are infinitely many values in here. Time can take on any real number. Any real number in this interval. So there, there are many in-betweens. And at a discrete data point, you can think of it as dots. The continuous time models, time uh, really varies continuously. And so to compare and contrast the tools for these sorts of models, I'll just make a few notes down here. So let's say discrete. We'll make a little chart discrete versus continuous time models. When we're working with discrete time models, um, our tools, sometimes you'll see them called difference equations or recurrence equations. You'll often see these called iterative maps if the, if the rule doesn't depend on uh, time. And then for continuous models, this is really the, these are the tools of calculus and differential equations, derivatives, things like that. Okay, and so I'll put a note here. This is like your classic discrete math class. When we talk about recursively defined sequences, and over here we're talking about calculus and differential equations, things like that. All right, so we'll be talking about both in this class, and I only assume you have a prerequisite of Calculus 1, uh, so we will build up any skills and tools as we need them.